Welcome to Engineering Concepts. In this video, we will learn about a 3D printing technique Closed Deposition Modeling. Active manufacturing or 3D printing has been a popular method of creating prototypes since the 1980s and is quickly becoming the fastest, most affordable way to create custom consumer goods as well. But how does this trendy technology work? There are several different methods of 3D printing, but the most widely used is a process known as fused deposition modeling. FDM uses the extrusion process to build 3D models. FDM prints use a thermoplastic filament, which is heated to its melting point and then extruded layer by layer to create a three-dimensional object. The technology behind FDM first developed by inventor Scott Crum, co-founder and chairman of Stratasys Limited, which is a leading manufacturer of 3D printers. A patent was awarded in the US in 1992. Stratasys introduced its first rapid prototyping machine, the 3D modeler, in early 1992 and started shipping the units later that year. Over the past decade, Statasys has grown progressively. Their rapid prototyping machines sales increase from 6 units in the beginning to a total of 1582 units in the year 2000. Other 3D printing organizations have since adopted similar technologies under different names. The Brooklyn-based company MakerBot now owned by Stratasys, was founded on a nearly identical technology known as fused filament fabrication. To create an object with FDM printer, we need a 3D design of that object with the help of CAD software. We need to check if there are any errors in the CAD file. If there are no errors, we can proceed and convert this CAD file to a format known as IGES or STL file format. This IGES or STL file format is nothing but the conversion of a 3D design data into thin layers of 2D cross sections. FDM printers use two different types of materials to build a 3D model. They are build material and support material. The material by which the actual object is obtained is known as build material and on the other hand the material which is used to support the build material during extrusion process is known as support material. During printing, these materials take the form of plastic threads which are unwound from a coil and fed through an extrusion nozzle. The nozzle melts the filaments and extrudes them onto a base, sometimes called a build platform or table. Both the nozzle and the base are controlled by a computer that translates the dimensions of an object into X Y and Z coordinates for the nozzle and base to follow during printing. As the extrusion nozzle moves over the build platform, the molten plastic is projected to draw a cross section of an object onto the platform. This thin layer of plastic cools and hardens immediately binding to the layer beneath it. Once a layer is completed, the base is lowered, usually by about one sixth of an inch to make room for the next layer of plastic. Printing time depends on the size of an object being manufactured, complexity of a 3D model, and specifications of the printer used. Small objects and thin objects print quickly, while large and complex objects take longer to print. Compared to other 3D printing methods, such as stereolithography, selective laser sintering, laminated object modeling, FDM is a fairly slow process. Once an object comes off the FDM printer, its support material are removed either by soaking the object in a solution or in the case of thermoplastic supports, snapping the support material off by hand. Objects may also be sanded, milled, painted or plated to improve their function and appearance. Although this might not be necessary every time, 
we need to take care while removing support structures as there is a good chance that the final object may get damaged if proper technique and tools are not used to remove the support structures. The principle of FDM is based on surface chemistry, thermal energy, and layer manufacturing technology. The material in filament form is melted in a specially designed head which extrudes on the model. As it is extruded, it is cooled and thus solidifies to form the model. The model is built layer by layer like the other 3D printing systems. Parameters which affect performance and functionalities of the system are material column strength, material fluxural modulus, material viscosity, positioning accuracy, road width, deposition speed, volumetric flow rate, tip diameter, envelope temperature, and part geometry. The main advantages of using FTM technology is when it comes to fabrication of functional parts, FDM process is able to fabricate prototypes with materials that are similar to that of actual modeled product. With ABS, it is able to fabricate fully functional parts that have 85% of the strength of actual model part. This is especially useful in developing products that require quick prototypes for functional testing. And when material wastage is concerned, the FDM process build parts directly by extruding semi-liquid melt onto the model. Thus, only those material needed to build the part and its supports are needed. The material wastages are kept to a minimum. There is also little need for cleaning up the model after it has been built. With the use of breakaway support system and waterworks variable support system, Support structures generated during the FDM building process can be easily broken up or simply washed away. This makes it very convenient for users to get to the prototypes very quickly and there is very little or no post-processing necessary. Build materials supplied in spool form are easy to handle and can be changed readily when the materials in the system are running low. This keeps the operation of the machine simple and the maintenance relatively easy. And the main disadvantages of using FDM technology are Restricted accuracy Parts built with the FDM process usually have restricted accuracy due to the shape of the material used, that is, filament form. Typically, the filament used has a diameter of 1.27 mm. And this tends to set a limit on how accurately the part can be built. Slow process. Building process is slow as the whole cross sectional area needs to be filled with building materials. Building speed is restricted by the extrusion rate or the flow rate of the build material from the extrusion head. As the build material used are plastics and their viscosities are relatively high, the building process cannot be easily speeded up. As the FDM process extrudes the building material from its extrusion head and cools them rapidly on deposition, stresses induced by such rapid cooling invariably are introduced onto the model. As such, linkages and distortions caused to the model built are a common occurrences and are usually difficult to predict. So, with experience, users may be able to compensate for this by adjusting the process parameters of the machine. FTM is popular with companies in a variety of industries, from automotive to consumer goods manufacturing. These companies use FTM throughout their product development, prototyping, and manufacturing processes. FDM models can be used in the following general applications areas. 
models for conceptualization and presentation. Models can be marked, handed, painted, and drilled, and thus can be finished to be almost like this actual product. Prototypes for design, analysis, and functional testing. The system can produce a fully functional prototype in ABS. The resulting ABS parts have 85% of the strength of the actual model part. Thus, actual testing can be carried out, especially with consumer products. Patterns and masters for tooling. Models can be used as patterns for investment casting, sand casting, and molding. The materials that can be used to print the object using FDM are FDM utilizes strong engineering grade materials like ABS, polycarbonate, and Ultem 9085 resin, and so on. These are the different types of materials and their grades. You can pause the video if you want to know about the material description, benefits, and their applications. FDM can create production parts and functional prototypes with outstanding thermal and chemical resistance and excellent strength to weight ratio. Thermoplastics can endure heat, chemical, and mechanical stress, which makes them an ideal material for printing prototypes that must withstand testing. And because FDM can print highly detailed objects, it's also commonly used by engineers that need to test parts for fit and form. FDM is also used to produce end-use parts, particularly small, detailed parts and specialized manufacturing tools. Some thermoplastics can even be used in food and drug packaging making FDM a popular 3D printing method within the medical industry. Let's understand what is meant by sparse fill and solid fill. One unique function of FDM 3D printers is a build mode that allows users to fill in thicker sections of the part geometry with what's called sparse fill. Sparse fill is when plastic is extruded in a scaffolding construction instead of a standard 3D printed layer. Solid fill is when the interior section of the geometry have no air gap between the interior fill. This results in sections of a 3D part being nearly hollow but with the support needed to retain strength and rigidity. Interior of either solid or sparse looks the same. The sparse version greatly reduces the weight when compared to its solid counterpart. Sparse filled parts can be finished with the same post processes such as solid fill. Sparse fill means less material built into the part. So the weight of the final part is significantly reduced. Because the 3D printer has less plastic to lay down in each layer, a part that utilizes sparse Fill takes less time to build, reducing delivery time. Additionally, the reduction in material used to build sparse fill parts and faster print time contributes to a cheaper overall part. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more engineering concepts. Happy learning!